want to play one more song called or, for the day, called Orders for a New Day. What is this? This is another one that uh, he and Bill Howell did together um, with the military. This for this is for uh, Remembrance Day special, yeah, I think, eh? that CBC did. Can't remember what year, 75, 76? We'll be able to tell by the quality of his voice. There you go. <laughs> Ariel Rogers, thanks again. Here is Stan Rogers, Orders for a New Day. The nation has sent the arrow Taking the tide at dawn Gaunt ships in a line with their burden of time Secret orders in the log and well-ordered men taking their shape in the fog. Secured in the seas before them, a disciplined shore behind. For two hundred years the forces were here on the shore. Of the town, from the line of the hill, strength of the people was found. You upright old man, battle ribbons in hand, and your eyes still on the flag. Would you send your son to an army that fights no more wars? Yes, I would, he cries. With offhand pride in what he was before. Traditional strengths of men together, where now we have peace working to better us all. Retains the arrow Defenders still greet the dawn All the ships of the line Set at rest for a time Orders for a new day And well-ordered men Training to serve and obey Well-ordered men Orders for a new day Stan Rogers, and we'll conclude our ramble through Stan's unpublished music on Morningside tomorrow. And recorded, but never released on record. Today we'll conclude this whole five-part series with talking about the Great Lakes Project. Good morning. Good morning. What was the Great Lakes Project? What? How did it come about? Well, Stan always said that he'd written about the East Coast, that was Fogarty's Cove, and he'd had his little dabble with uh, you know, contemporary folk music and made a statement with that, with Turnaround, and he did a, a live stage album, Between mm -hmm. the Breaks Live, and he had done Northwest Passage, which was about the West. And he was more and more making a statement, a very clear statement, about being a Canadian and how important that was to him mm -hmm. and he decided to fill in the gap in the map in other words right about the central part of canada where he grew up yeah. and discovered in the process that he was in his own words frightfully ignorant about the province in which he had grown up um so he applied to canada council got a little seed money to uh get himself some decent sound equipment and he 
rented a little office space, his concrete bunker, he called it, in a building in Hamilton, and sat down with his sound system and his guitar and proceeded to write. And that was a series out of which From Fresh Waters grew. Isn't That's it? right. But it seems, it seems to me, I may have talked to him about this, was there not also some, some feeling that this part of the country, the central part of the country, also had a maritime history. That if you say maritime to Canadians, they only think of the seas at either side. Yeah, and that's then, right. And, and, but there was really this sailing nautical condition in the uh, situation that's in right. the middle of the country. And it well. was overlooked. Uh, but that that wasn't a secondary thing in terms of, of filling in the gap in the map. It was it was obviously it became a, a primary a primary concern because. Um, a lot of stuff on from fresh water is of a thoroughly nautical nature. Yeah. He just kept returning to Mother Sea, and uh, it, it was no accident that uh, a, a lot of what he wrote had to do with the water. This is a piece called "Your Lakers Back in Town." Mm -hmm. Laker, as in as in uh, the lake boats boat. that ply the uh, the Great Lakes. It, it's a uh, it's a really good song. I don't understand completely why it didn't make it onto the album, because... Uh, something had to not be on, didn't it? Well, something had to not be on, I guess. I, I, th I think it's another case of he had this body of work and he, and he had a specific idea in mind of how it all came together and wanted to make more of a statement about the history of this area. Mm. Then he wanted to make a statement about the romance behind the history, because this song is about a romantic part of that, that history. Here's the song. I see him in your eyes, searching through the harbor and out across the bay. Thank you. 
That's Stan Rogers. Your Lakers back in town. He said, Ariel, he, he said this is kind of a hurting song, just where he said it to me when, so when he started to play. It's also kind of sweet. It's, yeah, it's sweet, but it's a hurting song. You know, it's sort of. I know these, uh, these songs where, where uh, you know, the girl, the girl sings, you know, you just use me and, and yeah. you know, like accusing the guy of just sort of using her and, and throwing her away and when he pleases. Well, there's a sort of the other side of that. Um, this lady who uh, has a fellow who works the boats uh, yeah. calls this guy up when he's out of town because uh, she can't do without a man, I guess. Um, it is sweet, but it's, but it's, uh, it's bittersweet. And it's a hurting tune. Stan does country. <laughs> <laughs> You know when you said when you fill in the map, there were lots of pl there were areas that in a way hadn't addressed himself to. I mean, they'd written about Quebec and all think and all mm -hmm. such and and I. But you know, so, just in the week before Christmas, I had a lovely chat with Al Purdy about his new autobiographic book work, which is out, which is called Reaching for the Beaufort Sea, mm -hmm. which is a line that's taken from Stan's Northwest Passage. And I, and I kept thinking that I didn't keep thinking, but I thought that Purdy was really the first Canadian poet to write about write in English anyway about our north, the real rug far north. You know? Right. And in a way, Stan was the first Canadian poet to write about some parts of our lives and some parts of the country. And, and I just wonder where he would have gone after the Great Lakes. Where would he have written about? What well, what might he have written about? He was interested in exploring the French Canadian roots mm -hmm. and Acadia. Very fascinated with with uh, all of that history in the United Empire loyalist stories in in uh, New, New Brunswick and the Gaspé, and uh, his one trip to Labrador City uh, really made him aware of just how drastically different the lifestyle is in in places like that. So yeah, always always something on the back burner. He had some Micmac in him too, didn't he? Micmac, yeah. Yeah, yeah one eighth or one sixteenth yeah. Micmac, something like that. Fascinating. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And would he have written about that, I wonder, especially he might the, have. the way the. He might have. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting in to hear country. what he had to say about Aquasasne. <laughs> it's sort of like, okay. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for all of these insights and all of this music and. And play now another song from one from the Great Lakes project is Stan. Just a little change left to blow away before I get the ferry. Throw the cup away, the bottle only holds a half a sip of wine. Crank up all the rest, I guess it sort of shows Don't care if anybody knows I haven't felt this good in quite a while Not a bit of you, I haven't thought of you since the early morning I haven't looked around, staring at the crowd, looking for your face seen the sky, only felt the wind, felt like laughing once again, looked for peace and finally got a taste, spent the afternoon at the pavilion, dancing with a stranger to the band. I felt just like a million Cause it's finally true I'm over you I'm 
felt just like a million Cause it's finally true I'm over you Got a little red lying in the sand Thinking about my dinner Smiling to the sky at people going by Walking hand in hand The sun is going down, water turning gray Rogers and his song, I'm Over You, concludes our series of Stan's unpublished music. Now, for one of our regular reports from Nova Scotia, Betsy Chambers is in Halifax, Wendy Bergfeld in Sydney. Good morning to you, too. Hello.